Adding triple screen capabilities to laptops is tricky. Their form factor just doesn't work well for it, and while some attempts have been made, these appear to be super janky and don't look very fun to work with at all. And it's understandable too, whilst LCD displays themselves are thin and compact, coming up with a mechanism that allows them to fold behind a laptop and be protected and be somewhat elegant in the process is always going to be a huge challenge. However, there is a simple solution. Change the aspect ratio. You see, this is an old iPad screen, and in its portrait orientation, it actually matches the height of a 15 inch laptop screen. More importantly, it's almost exactly half its width as well, which means that if two of them are used, one on each side, they can fold together. This method not only protects the displays from damage when they are folded away, but it's also very compact as the two folding displays don't overlap each other. Even here though, there remains a big drawback that affects all triple screen laptop designs, which is ergonomics. Laptops at the best of times aren't great for posture. Looking down at them for long periods of time is bad for your neck, and when side screens are included, things get even worse. As the main screen leans backwards to face you, any connected displays are literally rotated at an angle, which is quite disorientating and will make you want to tilt your head every time you look at one of the side screens. It's a genuinely awful experience, and is, I think, the real reason why they haven't caught on. So to do this project justice, we're going to have to go right back to the drawing board and rethink what it means to have a laptop. And this means that we're going to have to build the entire device from scratch. Now this actually sounds harder than it really is because these days we've got solutions such as the framework mainboard. Believe it or not, this super compact board is an entire PC system. It's really intended for the Framework Laptop, which is a modular and upgradable laptop system that aims to reduce e-waste, and as such, it's been designed to be used independently of the original laptop, so it's perfect to reuse for homebrew projects like this. In terms of I.O., it features four USB-C ports, any one of which can be used for powering the system. They can also each operate as display outputs like so. This means that while we could use them to drive all of our displays, the mainboard actually has an embedded DisplayPort output, which allows one of our displays to get a signal directly from it using a special cable. The highest resolution LCD panel I have is 4K at 120Hz, and remarkably it works just fine in this configuration, although it does only display once Windows loads the graphics drivers. But even so, that's really impressive. Having the main display connected directly to the motherboard like this saves a lot of space as it removes the need for an LCD controller board for it, but this isn't the case at all for the side screens. As these are bare LCDs, they only have a single ribbon cable as the input, so they do need to get their signal through some kind of adapter board, and the smallest and most compact one I could find is from Adafruit. As it features a DisplayPort input, a simple active USB-C to DisplayPort adapter is all that's required. But, as you can see, it does still require its own external power, which complicates things quite a bit as I really don't want to have an extra external power supply just for these displays. So we need to find somewhere else to pull this power from. Sadly, there's no obvious place on the board that we can tap into for this additional power, but I have an alternative idea. You see, the USB-C to DisplayPort cable is an active one, which means that there's powered circuitry inside the DisplayPort end that will be receiving 5 volts from the USB port. Annoyingly, it's encased in aluminium, so to get to it, I'm filing down the sides to safely cut through the top layer so that it can be prized off. The wires here are somewhat small, but we can quite clearly see that one is labelled as ground and the other as A4 which, according to a USB-C pinout chart, is the voltage supply. This gives us a 5 volt source to tap into, which is just enough to power the displays directly. Sweet. This gives us a fully self-contained triple screen setup that's ultra compact. But obviously we can't use it like this with everything loose, so we need to build it into some kind of housing. Now you might think mm, that sounds a bit difficult, but 3D printers are a thing, so we're going to actually use one to uh, print off all the required parts. Having the housing 3D printed allows me to design it to a high degree of detail, catering for all of the required mounting holes and various structural elements. 
While the bezels for the iPad screens are just about small enough to fit onto the print bed, I've had to divide everything else into two halves in order to get it to fit. Which is a bit of a shame, but they should be fairly easy to be clipped and glued together, so it shouldn't matter at all besides the inconvenience. Now as these are going to take a while to print, I'm going to take a lunch break with an ad for this video's sponsor, Huel. Huel Black Edition is a convenient and tasty way to have a nutritionally complete meal, fast. Just add two scoops of it to 500 milliliters of water, give it a good shake, and you're all set for a busy day. Each portion contains 26 essential vitamins and minerals, and is a good source of plant-based protein and fiber as well. I've been a fan of Huel for a long time, ever since Aaron introduced me to it way back when we were working on the Smartphone Shelf project, and I regularly use it when I need a quick, complete lunchtime meal when I'm feeling either rushed or just fed up of sandwiches. <laughs> There's loads of flavours to choose from as well, and it works out to be 186 per meal, which is significantly less than some people pay for a lunchtime coffee alone, so it's pretty good value. So click the link in the description if you'd like to order some Huel for yourself and try it out. These look great now that they've finished printing, and I think it's about time we start putting it all together. We'll begin with the side screens, which can be inserted into their new bezels and held in place by a back panel. The idea with these side screens is to have them mounted to the edges of the main screen, and as it's all pretty lightweight, we can use some tiny miniature hinges for this. They can simply be inserted into some small slots on the 3D prints, which mounts them together nicely. Cool. With both side screens mounted like this, they can be placed next to each other, which creates a bezel for the main screen in the middle. It's a bit flimsy right now due to it being in two halves, but that's okay, as the next component should add a lot of strength, which is the main back panel. This too has been printed in two halves, but after clipping and gluing it together with super glue, it's surprisingly solid. As you can see, this back panel has a plethora of mounting holes and supports for the various components that I want to fit inside, and they're intended to be used with some little threaded inserts which can be added with a hot soldering iron. These are required on the sides as well for screwing to the main screen frame, which gives it its required rigidity. Now this is where the fun can really begin, as it's time to add the various electronics, starting with the framework mainboard, which can simply be screwed in place to the threaded inserts. As you can see, there's a large gap that's been left above this mainboard, which is for a battery pack. This isn't anything special, it's just the standard framework battery that I got from their website, but that makes things super easy, as it can just be plugged in and screwed in place. As for the display boards, they need to be plugged in at this point too, with the ribbon cables carefully tucked behind them. Now, an unfortunate consequence of using USB-C to DisplayPort adapters is that it leaves a lot of loose wire, but there's actually just enough space if they're kept reasonably neat, so it's not too much of an issue. And there's still room to add the Wi-Fi card and its antennas. Now, as we've used three USB-C ports for both the displays and a power input, we're left with only one spare port. So, to get the most use out of it, we need to use it with a USB hub. As you can see, I've somewhat mangled its casing in order to get the PCB out, which makes it just that little bit more compact once it's glued in place. Its wire is mercifully short as well, so there's no problem plugging it into the final port on the motherboard. So, with all the components now inside, it's time to close it up with the back panel. As this features a vent for the fan, it needs a little grill adding that can be held in place with a shroud. There's also a through hole that's intended for a peg, which can push down on the mainboard's power button as and when desired. This back panel can just be screwed down onto the threaded inserts we added earlier, and as the screws are countersunk, they end up being flush. Now, with the screw heads visible as well as the glue join, it's not particularly pretty, but that's okay, as the plan is to cover all of this up with a special aesthetic panel. It's possible to get really creative with this by changing the filament colour midway through its print. Here I've gone with a golden hexagon mesh against a dark blue background, which looks really nice when mounted in place and gives the unit a unique look that you don't usually see when it comes to computers. So with the unit almost done, it's time to address the elephant in the room, which is the form factor. 
While this is clearly a portable computer, it is by definition not a laptop. It just can't be used in this way. But that's entirely the point. We've already established that laptops at the best of times aren't great for ergonomics, and having them on your lap actually doesn't make things any better. So how are we to use this thing? Well, this is where the concept really comes into its own, and it's all thanks to the use of some little brass rods. These can be inserted into some 3D printed end caps, which can in turn be inserted into some 3D printed brackets. This gives us a smart folding leg system, and along with the leather handle for the top, it makes the unit a real portable powerhouse. The elevation that these legs give makes the unit incredibly comfortable to use as it sits at eye level, with the screens perfectly upright, resulting in them not suffering from any side screen rotation. It's just incredible for correct posture, and as you can use a keyboard and mouse of your choosing, you can go with whatever you want, like a mechanical keyboard for example. Another big factor in what makes this setup so usable is the screen panels themselves. The iPad screens are Apple's first generation Retina displays, so they each have an incredibly high resolution of 1536 by 2048, a resolution whose height closely matches that of the main 4K screen, making scaling consistent between the two in addition to providing massive desktop real estate. After all, even on a desktop, having a 4K 120Hz central monitor flanked by two equally high DPI side monitors would be pretty high-end, let alone in a DIY portable package. So where does this idea go from here? Well, I'm actually making the project fully open source, so if you want to have a go at building one yourself, you can find the download files and everything you need in the description below, as well as a forum thread that you can use to help to develop the idea further, as I think it has real potential. But other than that, I'm Matt, you've been watching DIY Perks, and I hope I see you next time. Goodbye for now.